Hi, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to talk about how to multiply binomials and polynomials. If you are not yet comfortable in multiplying monomials and polynomials yet, why don't you watch that video first? Okay, watch the video of multiplying monomials and polynomials because this is going to be an extension to that video. If you are comfortable multiplying monomials or single terms times multiple terms, then this is going to be a brief extension and I think it'll start to click and make a lot more sense as we move forward. All right, let's get right to it. Let's start by defining a few of these words that I'm using a lot. So I'm talking about monomials, binomials, polynomials. When you're dealing with a single term or a number or variables put together, we call this monomial. Okay. When you're doing two or more terms that are being added or subtracted together, we call that a binomial. And then when you have more than two terms being added or subtracted together, three or more, we call that just a polynomial. Right? So a single term is something like 3x or 3xy or something that's just one term. Binomial is you're doing two more terms. So you can say something like 3x plus 2xy. Those are two terms. Three or more, as a polynomial, we're dealing with, say, x squared plus 3x plus 5. This is where you have three or more terms. In that statement. Here we have two terms, hence by poly meaning several. Now to do these two um, types of multiplication, what we're going to be talking about is honestly is how do you multiply say these two together? Two terms times three terms or two terms times two terms, right? How do you multiply binomials with each other or how do you multiply binomials with polynomials? To do that we have two methods. We call this um, FOIL method and we call it box method. Now FOIL method is actually an acronym that stands for first, outside, inside, last. I'll do this in say red. So first, outside, inside, and last. And I'll explain what these words mean in a little bit. And then we have box method. Now box method is very similar to what you've done in uh, biology with Punnett squares, where you're trying to figure out recessive traits and dominant traits, right? You probably remember seeing something like this, like a box, capital T, lowercase t, two lowercase t's, recessive traits and dominant traits, and as you start multiplying and filling in the box, you can figure out what kind of genes you're gonna be having, dominant genes and recessive genes. Anyway, not gonna get too much into the biology part of things, but I will show you how to use this box that you use as a Punnett square to solve or to multiply these different expressions. If at any point you find something here that is useful, go ahead and click the like button and subscribe so if you have not done so already. Let's try a few examples and let's see how this goes. So here we're multiplying two binomials, x plus six times x plus two. Now I'm gonna show you how to do this problem using FOIL method and I'm gonna use you how to do the exact same problem using box method. After that, if you want to stick around, you can see more examples of each method, right? But I feel that one should be enough, one example of each should be enough to give you an idea of which method makes more sense to you or which one you prefer. So let's start with FOIL method. FOIL method stands for first, outside, inside, and last. So if you multiply them, right, what we're dealing with is we're going to first multiply the first terms, which is these right here, the first one and the, the first binomial and the first term of the second binomial. When you multiply those, x times x, we get x squared. This is first. The next part is the outside terms, which means the terms furthest away from each other. So x times positive 2. When you do x times positive 2, we get positive 2x. And then we're looking at the inside terms, 
which means you're going to multiply the terms that are closest to each other. So the positive 6 and the positive x. 6 times x gives us positive 6x. And then finally, we're looking at the last terms. And that's when you multiply the terms that are furthest on the back, which is 6 times positive 2. And that gives us positive 12. Now, I know it's a lot to remember first, outside, inside, last. So a great way to think about this is think of it as distributive property. Take the first term and distribute across to the second. Let me see if I can. One second. So we take this first term and we're going to distribute it into the second, first part and the second part. Once you distribute that term, you're going to get x squared and 2x. Then you can distribute the other part. So we, we take this 6, the second term, and you distribute again to the first part and the second part. So you really can think of FOIL as distributive property being done twice. First with the x, and then with a the positive 6. Once you multiply everything, notice how the parentheses disappear, and then we just combine like terms, which are these two right here. 2x and 6x are like terms. And when you multiply, or when you add, com when you combine them, you're going to get x squared plus 8x plus 12. And we add these two terms together to get the, um, to get the 8x. So FOIL method is using distributive property twice. First with the x into the second binomial, and then the 6 into the second binomial. Let's try this exact same problem using box method. And then you can choose which method you prefer. Here we have x plus 6 and x times 2. So I built this box with four squares because we have four possible terms. 1, 2, 3, 4. So 2 by 2. And I'm going to fill in the sides of the box with, with my values. So I take this x plus 6. I'm going to write it here as x and positive 6. And then I take the second value, the second term, this x plus 2, and I write it over here as x and positive 2. Once I set up my box, my goal is to multiply all of these terms together. All right? So I'm going to multiply x times x, and in this box I'm going to write the product. Let's do it in black x times x gives me x squared. If I multiply x times 2, I should get 2x. It's a positive 2x. I can put a plus if I want. Similarly, down here in the bottom box, I have positive 6 times x, and I get positive 6x. And then lastly, we multiply 6 times the 2, and that's going to give me positive 12. Once you fill out the box and you multiply all the terms together, our goal is to combine like terms. So these two are going to be like terms. So I'm left with x squared plus 6x and positive 2x gives me 8x. And I'm left with 12 at the end. I can't combine anything further. And if you look at the previous example, we get the exact same solution. So they're really the same method, or the same, the same solution, same method, but just looks a little different. One of them's in a box, and one of them is using distributive property with arrows and things that are being multiplied. So choose an example. Pick the method that you feel more comfortable with right now. I'm about to do two more examples of FOIL, and those two same examples, I'll do them using box method towards the back. So if you prefer box method, fast forward a little bit. I'd say about seven, eight minutes. Fast forward a little bit, and then go to the other two examples of box method. If you prefer FOIL, stick around for the next five minutes or so, and you'll see two more examples of FOIL. All right. Either way, at the very, very end of this video, I have an example that's more complex. So if you get these two methods, go straight to the end. Go to the last three or four minutes of this video, and you can find an example that's more complex, which is ultimately the goal that we want to solve. All right, let's do a few examples. So here we have FOIL method, x minus 5 times x minus 1. 
I'm going to multiply. I'm going to focus on this first term. And I'm going to distribute it into the second term. x times x gives me x squared. And x times negative 1 gives me negative 1x. Then I take the second one, the minus 5, and I distribute into the second part of the um, problem again, the second binomial. So negative 5 times x gives me negative 5x. And negative 5 times negative 1 gives me positive 5. I'm doing double distributive property, or if you follow the order, FOIL. Then I want to combine like terms. So I have x squared. These two are like terms because they, they both have an x. Negative 1 and negative 5 turns to negative 6x. And at the end, I'm left with a plus 5. Notice how I can't combine anything any further. And this is really it. Let's try another one. For this one, why don't you press pause and give it a try? Solve the problem with me and see if we get the same solution. So we're going to distribute this 5x into the second binomial. 5x times 2x. That's 10x squared. Then I multiply 5x times positive 1. That's positive 5x. Then I go to the second value, negative 4, and distribute again to the other two terms. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8x. Negative 4 times positive 1 is negative 4. And here's where I combine like terms, which is this one and this one. So together, I end up getting 10x squared minus 3x minus 4. 5 minus 8 is negative 3. And that's how we get this value being simplified. So let's do these exact same two examples using box method. And we're going to get the exact same solution. So I write my problem as x negative 5 for my first value. And then for the second value, I take the x and I write it as a negative 1. Once I've put them in the box, remember our goal is to multiply things to fill in the box. So x times x, I get x squared in this first box. Then I do x times negative 1, and I get negative 1x. Negative 5 times x, I get negative 5x. And then lastly, negative 5 times negative 1, I get positive 5, because negative times a negative is a positive. And then as always, we want to combine like terms. We always want to add and simplify as much as possible, which is going to usually be these terms here in the middle, negative 5x and negative 1x. When you combine like terms, you get x squared, negative 6x, positive 5. How's this box method feeling for you guys? If it's helping you out, if this is helping you out, well, don't forget to click the like button. It lets me know that this is helping you out and it's being useful. Same problem using box method now, right? So here we have 5x minus 4. I have 5x and a negative 4. And then I have 2x and positive 1. Positives have a positives, the negatives have a minus, and again I just multiply. 5 times 2 is 10, and x times x is x squared. Then I multiply 5x times 1, that gives me positive 5x. Negative 4 times 2x, that gives me negative 8x. And then lastly, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. And again, I combine like terms. So I have 10x squared. Negative 8 and positive 5 gives you negative 3x. And then lastly, the minus 4 is by itself. So if you're multiplying the things correctly, at the end it's just about adding the coefficients. Let's try one last example. In this last example, we're dealing with now a binomial and a trinomial. And this can be done in two different ways. We can do FOIL or we can do box method. Okay? I'm going to show you how to do it both ways. Let's start with FOIL. I'll do FOIL in blue and I'll do um, box method in, in red or something like that. So in blue, 
I'm going to start by distributing, right, FOIL. I'm going to multiply this first term times every single term. So I start with x times x squared, which gives me x cubed. x times the second term, negative 3x, is going to give me negative 3x squared. x times positive 4 is 4x. So it's positive 4x. And then I go to the second term, positive 5. I distribute into every single term again. So 5 times x squared is positive 5x squared. Positive 5 times negative 3 gives me negative 15x. And then positive 5 times positive 4 is positive 20. So you're distributing every single term into every single of the last trinomial. Okay. Here I want to combine like terms. Notice how there's nothing the same with x cubed, so I just bring this x cubed down. And then I look, I can combine the x squares. Negative 3 and positive 5 gives you positive 2x squared. Four x minus fifteen x, that's going to give me negative eleven x. And then lastly, I have a plus twenty. And I was able to combine all of them. All right? This is using our double distributive property method. If you want me to solve this doing box method, uh, let's do box method as well. The only difference here with box method, and I'll do this one in, in green or something different, is uh, the box is not going to have four squares. It's going to have to have more of a rectangle. Because on the left, I have x and positive 5. But then I have to have three columns for the trinomial, the x squared, the negative 3x, and the positive 4. Right? In order for me to fill in the box, I have to extend the box to have more squares. But it's the same process, right? I'm going to multiply things and uh, separate them. So let's, let's separate this problem a little bit and have like two different parts. To fill in the boxes, we multiply. So x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 3x is negative 3x squared. x times positive 4 is positive 4x. Then the bottom, bottom left, we have 5 times x squared, which is positive 5x squared. Positive 5 times negative 3 is negative 15x. And then the last box is positive 5 times positive 4, which is positive 20. Now as I start adding things together, the x cubed stays by itself. But notice how I have a negative 3x and a 5x. Hello, sir. I have positive 5x squared and negative 3x squared gives me positive 2x squared. And then I have my x's. I have negative 15x and positive 4x. That's going to give me negative 11x. And then lastly, I'm left with a plus 20 by itself. Notice how the answers are identical regardless of the method you use. So pick one method, pick distributive property twice, or choose box method, whichever one you favor, and you'll still get the same solution. All right, everyone, as always, we'll calculate.